I, it, it seems like I started, but then when I look at the replays, even Twitch and YouTube are, like, a little bit inconsistent. I think I should bring back some kind of intro thing. Maybe not five minutes like it used to be. I mean, it went from ten minutes to five minutes to not there at all. But maybe I need that intro screen just just to smooth things out a little bit and make sure I get started right on track. By the way, welcome everybody to Sound Booth Theater Live, or at least everybody who's here. Um, today is the super, uh, sale on, super Sales on Superheroes edition of Sound Booth Theater Live. I will get started recording this one next week. I'm actually a bit behind in my schedule. I've been trying really hard to catch up. Um, but uh, I will. Uh, don't worry. Um, the books will be coming out. Uh, just doing the finishing touches on um, on a Harmon Cooper's feedback loop. Uh, but it will happen. It, it's, it's, I think... The last I'm recording like the last chapter after I'm done with the Sound Booth Theater live here, but um, uh, I'll I'll get caught up and um, I don't know I'm I'm running around a lot lately I have a lot of responsibilities I'm dealing with on top of all the books I'm accumulating, um, but I'll survive and it'll it'll make me a a better person for it I think I'll get I'll get better at at managing the show by the way the new uh, the Lit Table, the new show that's going to be, um, the new show that's going to, that's being written by five different Lit RPG authors, plus Mr. Michael Ryan Soilo, uh, that's getting started here pretty soon. The writing session will be started soon because, uh, Michael is almost done writing the module. He's already come up with a, a character sheet process, um, He's got, we decided to use uh, some someone, I can't remember who it was, uh, suggested that we use Roll20 for the game system, so that's what we're going to do. Um, so it's it's in process. It's it's getting started. I emailed all the authors that are going to be uh, going to have characters, and um, yeah, I, I'm really excited for it. I hope you guys are too, because it'll, it'll really add some better structure to the requests only uh, show and it, it may get to a point where I need to call it something else you know besides requests only and maybe maybe do a requests only once a month or something instead of every week that way you know I actually because it's gonna get to a point where there's like one request a week so it won't be requests only right that doesn't make any sense um, but um, uh, yeah so Today we're uh, we're figuring out voices for super sales on superheroes. Um, lots of, lots of lots of females. Obviously, this is William D. Arend we're talking about. Um, I just got through with an auction scene, reading an auction scene, just trying to look for look for scenes to do. And if any of you have already read the book, be sure to speak up and let me know what your favorite scenes are that aren't too spoilery, so that we can um, so that we can get it. Uh, we so that we can find some some fun stuff to entertain you with, and also so that we can get all the main interesting characters voiced and determined. So, um, first, uh, before we get started, I want to talk about something. Um, an author named Tom Shut. I don't know if it's Shut or Shut. I'm sorry if I get that wrong. Uh, I, I didn't know him personally, but um, I think he passed away either this morning or last night. And from what I hear, he was 24 years old. Um, and that's that's awful. That's tragic. Uh, he's, he's already written quite a few books. Um, and he actually did the, the, the new cover art for all the Feedback Loop series, the first six books. Um, and he just kind of, I don't know, this is a very unexpected thing. Um, and, uh, yeah, it's kind of shaking everybody up today. And I I feel like it, it would be, I don't know, insensitive of me not to mention it. Um, and not to mention his GoFundMe page. 
um, yeah, Har Harmon's, Harmon's pretty shook, shook up, and, um, so I, I, if you have my, if you know my Facebook, uh, profile, um, you can look there, or, um, also on the Lit RPG, on the Lit RPG Facebook group, um, I believe Harmon has put, has put a link up for, uh, <clears throat> has put a link up for, um, for his GoFundMe. So if you, if you want to give to his family to help with, uh, to help with, with his, his arrangements and stuff, go do that. Um, I think they're, I think they're up to like probably 3000 by now. Um, but obviously, you know, funerals cost a lot more than that. Uh, that that'd be great, Sin, if you could link it here in the chat. Um, it's, it's just a, I don't know. The guys, the guys, like half a decade younger than me, and just all of a sudden gone. I still haven't heard what the actual cause was. Um, uh, it, it's it's just a shock, you know. Uh, and he, he, not only did he do the the artwork for the feedback loop series, but um. Uh, I believe Blaze said that he did some editing for him for Delvers 2. <laughs> uh, and I, I think he was, uh, for Apollo's Thorn, I believe, he did some editing. Um, oh. And for William D. Aaron. So definitely it's appropriate for me to be talking about this. It's, it's fucking awful. Uh, as, as far as I know... I think I think maybe Harmon was gonna have him do editing for him too. So it's just a, a big loss for the Lit RPG community. Um, I I think um, Harmon was telling me that he was talking about collaborating with somebody and starting his own Lit RPG series. I mean, um, yeah, it's it's awful. So Sins just put up the link for the GoFundMe. If you can check it out. Um, you know, if you got 10 bucks to spare or something, or more than that even, just uh, send it their way. I'm sure they need it. I, and, you know, his, I, I can't imagine how his folks must be feeling, you know. Someone passing away that young, 24 years old. Insane. Um, yeah, I, I, it looked like from, from the look of the books, they're like an urban fantasy um, type of series. I've, I've never read his stuff. I never met him. You know, he seems like from from what I've read through all the Facebook posts, he seems like he was a really cool guy. I don't know. I don't know what else to say about it, but um, I'm sorry for everyone who actually did know him. Um, and uh, I don't know. Uh, in in times of death, I really it's there's really nothing to say <laughs> except uh, I hope we all heal from this stuff. It's It's, uh, yeah, very shocking. Very shocking. Um, so, give what you can, guys. Um, and, um, yeah, so we'll get on with the show, though. I don't want to just be a total bummer. But, um, anyway, this is a Wednesday show, so I will be giving out five audiobooks. Uh, and they're all going to be lit RPG. First of all, oh, no, I forgot to add the Selfless Hero images because I am giving some of those away. Uh, obviously this is not, the entire omnibus is not available in audio at once, but you can buy them all separately if you want to. Other life dreams, uh, other life nightmares, other life, uh, what was it, awakenings. Um, I'm giving any one of those three away. Uh, I'm giving away pretty much any of my any of my lit, lit RPG stuff. The feedback loop, that's up already, uh, th or that was up earlier. Um, also Delver's LLC, uh, I'll be giving away. Here it is. Um, so anyone who wants a free audiobook, let me know in the chat. I'll keep reminding you guys kind of between chapters and stuff. 
And um, yeah, so let's let's get on with it. Um, I think that the first scene that I want to do will be when uh, the ladies first get to talk. Let me find where that is. So our main character, Felix, um, he's figured out how to take these slaves, right? <laughs> he figures out how to not, not only... Um, he figures out that the first body that he gets is not only a living person, but he finds out that he's bought them as a slave, so they can't do anything because um, they're like because she's like mangled and tortured and everything. And he gets a, a call from the mysterious black dude about um, more bodies, more tortured people. So he buys those two, you know, discounted slaves, right? He buys them, and he starts putting them back together. And so eventually, they uh, he's got three women all in his little... He's created a like a little recovery ward in his... I think in his basement. I think it's in his basement. And um, so he, he's, he's put them together. He's put their mouths together so they can talk. And I want to get to that part. Well, let's see. Let's just start with chapter three. Chapter three. It begins. The garage was utterly silent as he stared at the three open window open wooden coffins. Without realizing the impact of what he was doing, he'd opened all three boxes, made sure each was in a coma, and confirmed the draw at 100%. Then he'd wandered off with his supplies and set up the ward, as he was calling it. Dropping the money off as instructed, he'd gone back into the garage. Only on his return did he now realize he wasn't sure who was the one he'd bought first, and who were the two he'd just purchased. He'd reverted all his modifications back to the baseline to get his points back. They all looked the same. He really hadn't paid much attention to anything that would have made the first one stand out from the others. They all looked as if they were corpses that had gone through a meat grinder. Okay, so, again, Felix. Um, I don't want him to have too full of a sound. Uh, I don't want him to sound like Runner, either. So I think what I've decided to do with him is kind of, I've, I've kind of just taken uh, Quantum and pulled the accent out, pulled the attitude out, and put a new attitude back in. So he's, he's going to have like the same voice box as Quantum, but as, a, you know, as a, it's, it's, like, it's like the same actor playing a completely different role, right? Uh, so he's going to have, like, he, that age is going to be there, and the sort of highness, the that the pitch to his voice is going to be there, but he's going to sound a little more meek, because um, cause this Felix guy, he's not exactly a badass or anything. Ah, oh, well, doesn't matter. It's not like this is a stupid story where the first heroine on the scene gets all the fans. Felix grumbled to himself, and then set to work. That meeting with the lawyers had really thrown him off. Pretty badly, in fact. Felix changed his thoughts as fast as he could before he settled back into a violent anger. He carefully lifted each woman, one at a time, and carried them to the ward. Once he settled them in the bed, he reused the slave box on each individual. Luckily, they each had at least one toe or finger he could fit in the box. Now that he was really paying attention as he shifted them into their new homes, he realized they all had different heights. He couldn't really tell what their body types were, though, especially given the fact that they'd had their, their entire body mutilated. They were scarred and horribly disfigured. Whoever had done this to them truly hated them. Selling them in this condition had been the final insult, he imagined. Sighing, with his hands on his hips, he regarded his three sleeping corpses, He'd dressed them in simple pajamas he'd purchased and had put them in diapers. 
he'd have to work fast to get them to a point where he could at least get nutrients in them. Not being a doctor or having any clue about medicine, he gave himself two days. He could keep them going through his power and forcing their bodies to repair, but that was a short-term solution that would inevitably end their lives. No, he had to work to get them to a point where they could drink and eat, to live and keep themselves alive. Beyond that, everything was superficial. Looking around his ward, he did a mental check of it. It was one of the big master bedrooms that had been turned into a guest room. The attached bathroom with tub and shower would be perfect for a temporary ward. He wasn't quite sure how long they'd be laid up, and giving them a bath close to their sickbed would probably be ideal. He'd also attached a smart TV to the wall in case he got bored. Hours spent waiting around for living corpses didn't sound great to him. Three occupied twin single adjustable beds with matching sheets were the big ticket item in the room, not to mention they took up most of the space. It had been a little more expensive to get the adjustable ones, but he figured being able to sit them upright would help for mealtime. Then there was a single stool for him to use, so he could sit next to those beds. Standing next to them as he worked didn't really sound all that fun. He'd also purchased a sleeping bag for himself in case he had to sleep in here. There were also three rolling trays like the ones found in hospitals that could slide over beds. Eventually, they'd be eating and drinking again. And a veritable slew of supplies that he would probably need during their convalescence. Bedpans, more pajamas, diapers, cups, bowls, utensils, anything he could think of that they'd need. Dropping down into the stool with a clank, he looked around nervously. Huh. They can't hear me. What am I thinking? Felix said to no one. Pushing off the ground, he wheeled the stool around to the first bed. A fraction of a thought from him and the window popped open. He cycled through everything that was wrong with her. First things first. The ability to eat and drink, Felix muttered. Two changes, and she had teeth and lips. She still had a tongue, and as far as he could tell, everything was working as far as her plumbing and digestive system went. Frowning, he contemplated some of the mental issues listed. He didn't bother to read them off. It was apparent she'd been tortured to near insanity. In case you don't know, um, so right here what he's talking about is, so, uh, Felix's power is he can kind of, like, put up a dialogue box for... At this point, he thinks it's for people, for any th any item he owns or any person he owns. So when he looks at at the when he pull, pucks up the, when he pulls up that dialogue box for these people for these for these women, he actually can see all of their injuries and he can see um, what what mental condition they're in. Even if he managed to get her to a point where she could eat, would she be a raving lunatic? Tilting his head to the side, Felix focused on the idea of wanting her to lose her memories of the last month. She'd, he'd chosen a month since that was about the time that the heroes of the city had started to take real losses. And the sought-after negative trait appeared. Sh Short-term amnesia popped up as if by magic. In the same instant that he selected it, the negative mental problems turned gray. Gray as in no longer active. that they wouldn't be a problem any further. The traits weren't really gone, but they would no longer be able to make an impact anymore. It even had the added bonus of giving him points back, since amnesia certainly wasn't a good thing. Neat, Felix said. He confirmed the changes and slid to the next bed, repeating the process for the other two women. Upon finishing on the third, he realized he still had about 300 points or so left. The amnesia had really... The amnesia had really offset the costs and pushed him into a better point bracket than he'd thought he would be. Shrugging, he looked at the clock. It was about ten minutes till midnight. The whole midnight reset thing still bothered him, but not enough to question it anymore. Standing up, he stretched his back and then prepped three cups of water, three bowls of chocolate pudding, and three bowls of lime jello. There was no telling if they'd be hungry. Or thirsty, even. But he'd rather be safe than sorry. Not to mention, it might help him earn some brownie points with them. Cooperative slaves were preferable. 
Then he walked in front of each bed at 11.58 p.m. and disabled their comas one by one. Deciding that he'd rather be perfectly safe without a concern for what they might do, he then took the restraints he'd purchased and looped one around each woman's waist. They'd be unable to get up unless he did, unless he undid the buckle that ran around the back of the bed. It took only a few minutes, but they all began to stir at roughly the same time, their arms twitching and their lips fluttering as they came back to life. Okay, so this is where it gets real creepy. Um... Ah, what was I going to say? There, there's a reason I stopped here. Oh, by the way, if you're just tuning in, I'm reading Super Sales on Superheroes. I'm trying to figure out exactly uh, what kind of voices we need to use for all these characters. And we have his first three slaves waking up right now. Um, oh, I remember what I was going to say. But, uh... Oh, wait, right, and right before that. Uh, remember, I'm giving out free audiobooks, so if anybody wants one... Say so in the Twitch chat. If you're not, if you're watching on Facebook or on YouTube, come on over to Twitch. Pop up in the chat. I wish I could watch every, you know, all the different comment sections from Facebook and YouTube, but unfortunately I can't. That's why I have this. Uh, that's why I have this thing here, um, so I can monitor Twitch with just this, with just this monitor here. But if you want a free audiobook, say something here. Anyway. Um, when I first read this part, I was thinking, if he's if he pops them out of a coma, don't they just like wake up in like in insane pain? Like ah, like I would expect I would expect them all just to wake up and just be screaming immediately, since they're in such a horrid in horrid condition. Well, they kind of do here. <laughs> It's a little more organized than I than I imagine it would be, but I guess there's it's it's how else are you gonna portray it? Okay, so I guess it doesn't really matter. <laughs> William says, I considered it and wrote it that way once. Then I uh backed up very rapidly after I reread it. <laughs> Um, so, we're not sure what order these people are in, um, at this point. But I have to come up with a voice for each one of them. So we have, uh, let's see, where's the, where's his, the first chart that he comes up with, uh, that shows all their, left side is Mew. That's right. Uh, Mi Miyumiki, Iona Iliescu, and then Kit Carrington. Kit Carrington's like the most reasonable one. I think Miyumiki, Miyumiki is the aggressive, pissed off one. Okay, left is Miyu, right is Kit, middle is Iona. All right. What's going on? All right, so I'm thinking that's Kit. Why can't I see? Get this blindfold off me! All right, I'm I'm thinking that's Miu. And uh, no, Iona is the one that's the Viking, right? So yeah, she's the one with the attitude. I can't remember what Miu's like. Why can't I see? Get this blindfold off me! She kind of sounds like, um... She kind of sounds like, um... The big barbarian woman from Other Life. My fingers! My fingers are gone! Shouted a third. Felix bit his lip and took a deep breath. <clears throat> Good evening, everyone! he said. All three stopped, their eyeless heads swiveling in his direction, trying to track him. First, don't panic. You're in a safe place while you recover, while you're put back, while you're put back together. Second, there's been some serious changes in the city. 
You three were captured by a villain who took over the city. They run it completely, from top to bottom. Felix took a deep breath before he continued. You've been... You've been tortured to the point that you should be dead. Felix felt his stomach flip over. This wasn't the best way to start. I've removed your memories for the last month, and I've begun working to... to fix you. To put you back to rights. I swear I can do it. You'll find that at this moment, you're a normal human with... severe injuries. The city has fallen. Heroes are being hunted and killed in the streets for bounties, or being turned over to the government to handle. Or being turned over to the government to handle. Also for a bounty. Heroes are pretty much outlawed right now, and there doesn't seem like there is anything that can be done to change the situation. In fact, the population supports everything, as the economy is now booming. Unemployment is way down, economy is up, and they pushed through, and they pushed through universal health care. Three, three, head, three headless hairs, three hairless heads made tiny bobs as if they agreed or understood that. Odd. Now the hard part. The only way that I was able to retrieve you was to purchase you as slaves. Slavery now being legal, that is. Slave contracts are enforced magically and permanently binding. I can shift your ownership to someone else if I chose. If I choose. No, if I chose. As your slave contracts appear to be a punishment rather than for a set limit or cost, there is no going back for you. Your slaves for the inter your slaves for the interminable future. At this point, all three women sat up straighter, their spines stiffening. One lifted her battered arm to, to gesture wildly at where she probably thought he was. They started asking questions at the same time, all demanding an answer of him, loudly. Annoyingly. Be quiet! Felix finally got out, raising his voice. Then he closed his eyes and counted to ten in his head. He had to tell them exactly what was happening now. There wasn't a room for there to be misunderstandings or changes down the road. This was where he set it all up. All three had fallen silent from his command. Sorry. But you don't seem to understand your position. I own you. I've bound you in a slave contract. I'm no hero. I'm not doing this for charity. I don't want you to suffer, nor do I want you to be disfigured for life. I do want you for what you can give me, though. My power seems to increase in power by the number of people I have in a contract. I imagine it works for villains or heroes. Probably even civilians, to a lesser degree. Oh, and you'll not discuss any of this with anyone. This is confidential. For us alone. Felix sighed and put his hands on his knees. The woman in the center bed was struggling the strap around her wrist her struggling with the strap around her waist. The closest one had the stumps of her hands pressed to her mouth. The one in the furthest bed looked disoriented, but unafraid. You can speak now. Please don't yell. And since none of you can see, there's three of you here. Nor do I know your names. Let's start there. My name is Felix. I... my name is... Stop, Felix cut in. Let's do this. I'll touch you on the shoulder. You say your name. He got up and walked over to the woman on the far left. He gently touched her shoulder with a finger. What's your name? My name is Miu. Miu Miki, said the woman. You may ask one question before <clears throat> you may ask one question before we move on to the next person, Felix said. He was trying to be fair, but he also wanted to get moving with this whole thing. What do you plan to do with us? Miu asked. Plan to do with you? Nothing. You'll end up living with me while you recover. After that, I don't know. Maybe get jobs and have a normal life? Next, Felix tapped the woman in the middle on the shoulder. Name? I am Iona Iliescu. Iliescu. That's a, diff that's a tough one. <laughs> I am Iona Iliescu. El Iliescu. I am Iona Iliescu. 
the War Maiden, and you'll release me- No, I won't. Sorry. Like I said, this is a villain city now. As long as they're in charge, you're my property, and I'll be using your powers to my benefit. Now, Iona, do you have an actual question? I have a statement. If you even try to rape me, I'll rip it off. Good to know. I have no plans to abuse you three against your will. I stand by my earlier comment. This isn't charity. In the same breath, I'm not a villain, though. You'll live, work, and stay with me, but you do still have certain rights. I think not being raped is definitely one of those rights. Felix walked around Iona's bed and approached the third woman. He tapped her shoulder gently. Her head turned up in the direction she probably thought he was, and then smiled. My name is Kit Carrington. I can't hear your mind. I can't hear anyone's minds. Everything is silent. Is everyone dead? Are we all dead? She said, wonderingly. No. The takeover went rather smoothly. Only heroes ended up dead or missing. Pretty sure all the civilians were allowed to walk out with a clean slate. I'm pretty sure I've depowered you and boosted my own power. Do you have a question for me? Her earlier question felt more like a panic response than an actual question. She processed that and then nodded her head. Can you fix me completely without repowering me? She asked. I can and plan to do that. You'll be as fit as any other human out there. More so if we have the time to bump up your stance. Though even if I did repower you, and I might. Depending on, what mo depending on what my needs are, I could just as easily turn it back off. Kit nodded her head at that, and then lay back down comfortably in her bed. If you can keep it as quiet as it is, if you can keep it as quiet as it is right now, I'll serve. Willingly. Call me Kit. The woman named Iona made a sound of disgust at that. Kit Carrington? You're Augur? Miu asked. I was Augur. I'm Kit now. Only Kit. The woman sighed and snuggled into her bed, adjusting her sheets. Can I have some water? Or tea? And maybe something to eat? I'm not hungry, but I think I'd like a snack and a drink. I just realized something. I, I was trying to remember, I was trying to think of what this book reminds me of. And it's funny because I really can't think of any other stories that have quite this concept. Um, but what it really reminds me of <laughs> is the human centipede. <laughs> just, just the setup. <laughs> How he's kind of got everybody trapped. He's like doing experiments on them. And they can talk. But it's like a nice human centipede. <laughs> Augur. As in the strongest telepath? Arguably the world's... Arguably the world's strongest? Arguably the world's strongest? Who, who rumor said she spent hours at a time in a catatonic state when her gift would overwhelm her? Wow. Oh, yes, here. Felix loaded up a tray with a bowl of pudding, jello, and one of the jugs of water. Wheeling over the cart to her, he set a spoon on her palm and then gently wrapped medical tape around it so she could use her mangled hand to some degree. <coughs> Then he adjusted the bed so he was sitting up, taking a moment to reset her blankets. The bowl on the left is pudding, the middle bowl is jello, and on the far right is water. I wasn't sure what condition you would be all be in once I woke you, so we're sticking to simple things for now. Things that you can digest regardless of whatever condition your insides are in. Good plan. Makes sense. <clears throat> Excuse me. Kit said, dipping the spoon into the puddle puddle, dipping the spoon into the pudding and then trying to guide it to her mouth. Could you get me some as well? Miu asked, her voice soft. Of course. 
Give me one second while I get that all prepped, Felix said, moving over to her. So you can fix amputations. Quite a power set. What do you plan on replacing next? Kit asked, closing her mouth around her spoon. Oh, chocolate. Either your hands or your eyes. I can only do so much in, a, in any given day. It resets at midnight every night. Then I can do it all over again. Hands, please, Mew said. Felix adjusted her bed and then wheeled her tr full tray over. Eyes can wait if I can take care of everything else myself. Kit nodded her head. Kit nodded her head as she tried to reposition her spoon. Maybe hands. I think maybe eyes, personally. Maybe hands. I think maybe eyes, personally. I'm not keen on being blind so far. This was all rather unexpected. They were actually reacting better than he'd thought they would. That or they were playing with him, waiting for an opportunity to do something. Wouldn't matter, though since they were magically bound in their contracted, con contracted states to him. Behind him, Iona grunted and then said with a stern yet soft voice, A tray for me as well, if you please. I admit the same as Kit. I do not hunger, but I think I would enjoy having something to drink and eat. Felix grinned at that. Sure thing, Iona. I'll take care of that. All right, so... So then, uh, that's, that's the part where they all kind of, like, start getting better. And it's interesting how, at different points, he can actually take points away and, like, there's a, there's one part where, where, uh, they want to go to an auction. Um, Felix and Kit want to go to an auction, uh, uh, auction, but she's still not complete enough, and they need to save money and stuff, so <laughs> two of the girls actually elect to give up an eye each so that she can be more complete when she goes there so that she doesn't she doesn't bring attention to herself kit that is it's fucking weird <laughs> okay so chapter 6 is uh i don't know i thought about doing chapter 6 but really it's just kit and felix um at the auction, and I, I don't, I don't think it's quite that interesting, because we, because you get to see more heroes, but you don't really get to hear them, um, but then chapter seven, we get to, we get to, uh, meet Lily, who's apparently this powerful mage type character, um, and she's not quite as, uh, easy to persuade to be a a gentle slave as the other girls are but she's also she was also in one piece when he bought her so we'll do chapter 7 and then um william is there a is there a good place to to introduce us to andrea i know i know he gets andrea from that first auction but I don't know where um, he, where we really meet her as readers. Maybe it's in chapter seven. I only got like a few pages into chapter seven. So, oh, by the way, if you're just tuning in, if you're just, uh, if you just started watching, I am reading Super Sales on Superheroes by William D. Arend. Uh, I'll I'll be starting recording on this one next week, but I'm trying to figure out. Um, how to voice all the characters. Um, all mo most of the cast is women, so it's quite a challenge for me. But I'm always up for a challenge, um, and I've done it before with uh, the other life, the Selfless Hero trilogy, which I am giving away copies of. By the way, if you show up in the Twitch chat and you request copies, I'm giving away five. So um, I'm giving away stuff from the Selfless Hero trilogy. Uh, Delver's LLC, excuse me, Paragons, uh, Sigil Online Paragons, or the first book of the Feedback Loop. So if you want something, say so in the chat. Remember, there's only five copies, so get them while they're hot. Um, anyway, so we're moving on to Chapter 7, and we're going to meet Lily.
um, before, in the chapter before, it says her voice is really low. But here at the beginning, it says it's melodic as well. So we'll see how, how I handle this one. <clears throat> chapter 7. Investment. You will wake up now, the melodic voice brought Felix out of a deep dream. Blinking a few times, he managed to slowly focus on Lily standing above him. <clears throat> Morning, Lily, Felix said, and then yawned. Looking over at the clock, he saw it was a touch past seven. Let me turn on, turn on my fan here. Getting hot for no reason. Little early to wake up. I don't have a job anymore. Self-employed. You will release me, said the lovely soul-stealing monster. Um, no? Seriously. What'd you wake me up for? Felix rubbed at his eyes with the palms of his hands. Do what I say, fan. This fan's really weird. It takes a long time to get started. <clears throat> Felix rubbed at his eyes with the palms of his hands. I... You will really... No, I won't. And, just a hint, none of your powers will work on me. The pit pretty much ended that problem. On top of that, I took your powers away to fuel mine. Completely. Oh, completely. You're just a beautiful young woman right now. That's it. Felix swung his legs over the edge of the bed, sending Lily scurrying backwards a few steps. Sighing, he bent over his knees and slapped his hands into his temples twice. <sighs> Breakfast. Need food. No. My magic can't be gone. It can't. It can't. I can't do anything. This is... No, Lily said, making strange hand gestures. Well, temporarily gone. I can turn it back on whenever we need it. Is something burning? Felix asked, sniffing the air. Temporarily? Give them back to me. Lily stepped in close and loomed over him. Yeah, no. Seriously, though, it smells like burnt toast. Felix stood up and pushed Lily back with one hand as he left his room and headed for the kitchen. Now! You will give them back now! Lily shouted at his back, trailing him. Entering the kitchen, he found Felicia sitting on the floor with what looked like a toaster spread across the tiles. She looked very confused, her hands holding the shell of the toaster. The grunting snores coming from the living room on the, on the other side of the island drew his attention. Sprawled out on a couch and sounding much akin to a chainsaw going through a zombie was Andrea. Okay, so Felicia is the inventor. She's really short. Um, really short, I think. She might be black. Let me look at her. She had dark brown curls that hung short around her face. She had a petite look to her and a small hourglass flame. Her fa frame. Her face was on the cute side of the equation, but held a fiery look to those light brown eyes. So not r not not black apparently, but petite. Let's try something. Let's try something really high, I guess. I can't fix it. It wasn't working right. I can't make it work. Felicia mumbled. 
She looked up to him and held up the toaster shell. I'm broken. Letting out a slow breath through his teeth, he pressed a hand to his head. Powers! Now! Lily shouted in his ear. Andrea snorted and fell off the couch, jumping up to her feet. She threw her arms to the left and then the right while yelling incomprehensibly. Her face twisted up in a confused frown, and she hopped in place twice. Okay, so Andrea, um, Andrea is this squirrel lady here. This one on the cover. <laughs> How am I going to do her? I can't split. 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 Uh, we'll see how this works. William, if you got any tips on, on these characters, I'd appreciate it. Be quiet for two minutes, all of you. For fuck's sake. Felix sat down on a stool and shook his head. Kit, Mew, and the... Kit, Mew, and Iona stepped out of their shared room. All three looked confused. Or annoyed. Iona somehow managed both. Sorry. They're just now figuring out I took their powers. I probably should have explained more last night. Felix apologized to the three. I'm going to set everyone to a small percent of their power back. This isn't permanent. Felix called up each woman's screen and set the draw to 95%. That left him with 7,800-some-odd points. There. You all have a fraction of your power back. Except for you, Kit. I have yours still off. Thanks. Leave it off. Are you making breakfast today? She asked, sliding into a stool across from him. Was going to, but Felicia decided the toaster had to die. So that removes anything from the toaster menu. So that rem that removes anything from the toaster menu. Whatever. Maybe we should go get some breakfast or something. Need to sell that gold and do another conversion today. Then use the rest of the points on you three. You will give me my powers back. Now. All of them. Then I'm leaving, Lily demanded, her hand resting on his shoulder. Lily, what part of this haven't you gotten yet? My name is Mab. No, it's Lillian Lux. You're 26 years old, and you don't have magical powers. You actually have ethereal projection. You honed it to the point where you could draw magical symbols and runes with it. Now, here's something you should know. Felix looked over his shoulder at the enchanting face. Felix looked over his shoulder at the enchanting face. You're my property. You can't harm me or tell me what to do. So far, I've been tolerant, and I will continue to do so. That tolerance will eventually run thin. Felix blew, blew out a breath and then scratched at his head. <sighs> I don't plan on using you against your will, but you will remain my property. You can live a fairly normal life, but you won't be running rampant with your powers again. Any questions? Lily's mouth hung open. Her jaw worked as she seemingly tried to find the words. No? All right. Felicia, Felix said turning to the woman with his toaster. Did you murder it, or can you fix... Did you murder it, or can you fix that with the small amount of power I put back in you? I can fix it, Felicia said, already hard at work putting the whole thing back together. Goody. Okay, let's see. Andrea's turned out to be pretty silly. So, what can I do with her voice? Sorry, my foot's itching. <laughs> I, I can make pancakes, Andrea said loudly, bouncing back and forth in one spot. Then she separated into two people. Felix looked from one to the other, then back again. We can do it. Leave it to us, they said in unison. We can do it. We can do it. Leave it to us. They said in unison. I think I'm starting to pick it up. They said in unison. 
Picking up a marker from the table, he looked to the Andreas. Which one of you is the Prime? he asked. The Andrea on the left held up her hand, high above her. Hoi! That's me! Hoi? What does that mean? Felix walked over to the Prime Andrea, pulled the sleeve of her shirt up, and wrote a big P on her shoulder. We'll need something more permanent. I'm betting metal won't be duplicated when you clone yourself. Maybe a ring or a necklace? Anyways. Right. Start in on those pancakes. Thanks, Andrea Prime and Andrea One. The Beastkin and her clone looked at each other. We never thought of that. We never thought of that. They said at the same time. Then they cheered in unison, and they both leapt over the couch to get into the kitchen. I suppose today can be interview and job assignment day. Each of you, please come see me one at a time in the study. We'll get this sorted out now before we get any later in this hole. Felix made a jerky movement with his hands as he spoke. Whatever this is. Sliding off the stool, he pushed it under the counter and went to the study. He popped the power button on his computer as he went, sitting down behind the desk. The door slammed shut, and Felix looked up. Lily sat down in the seat across from him, her hands pressed to the desk. You will start with me, she said ominously. Hooray, Felix deadpanned. Do not mock me, Lily said, le leveling a finger at him. Why not? So far all you've done is bitch and moan. All I've done to you so far is drain your powers. Give me a reason to not treat you like a spoiled, conceited little princess. Felix typed in his password and flipped through a few virtual pages that came up on the desk terminal. Firing open a spreadsheet with an attached word processor, he began writing in her basic information. I don't... No. Stop. I don't... No. Stop. You will not do whatever you like. Yes, I will, Lily. Keep it up, and I might lose my temper and tell you to sit in a corner for the day. You'd be forced to obey. That, or I tell you to never speak again. Felix angrily hit the holographic enter key and glared at her across the desk space. Lily frowned and then looked at the desk. She clasped her hands together and then glanced back at the shut door behind her. You don't fear me, she said, looking up at him and through looking up at him through long lashes. Looking up at him through long lashes. Not in the least. Now, let's start with where you are now and what you're worth. Felix called up her character sheet with his power. Name, Lillian Lux. Power, ethereal, ethereal projections. What's up, Actress27? How's it going? By the way, uh, that reminds me. Thanks for dropping by. Um, anyone who's new, anyone who's just coming in, I'm reading Super Sales on Superheroes by William D. Arend. Uh, I'm going to get started recording this one next week. Um, and I'm just... Uh, pretty much trying to figure out how to voice all these characters. I'm, do I'm doing pretty well. Thanks, Actress27. Well, thanks for dropping by. So I'm trying to figure out how to voice all these characters. Uh, it's all, it's main, it's pretty much, the cast is like 95% women. So uh, it's quite a challenge, but it's a challenge that I'm not unfamiliar with, especially with Mr. William D. Aaron's work. So um, right now we're Try, we're, we're, I don't know Crispin Freeman. Um, so we're trying to get through this scene where, uh, Felix, the main character of the book, is giving out jobs to the different slave girls he's got so far. Um, they're all superheroes. Everyone in this house are superheroes. Uh, three of the women are, were tortured to the point where they were almost dead, and he bought them as slaves. And then, and just recently, he bought three more as slaves, but they weren't in bad condition. They were actually in one piece and completely healthy. And so he's he's distributing points. He's using his own superpower to fix the ones that were in horrible condition. And he's using those points also that he's getting from the superheroes. Uh, like, he's able to take away their powers and add that to his pool to um, improve the things that he owns. So he's like buying up lead, buying up other things, and, and using his powers to like turn them into gold and stuff. 
So, uh, by the way, if you're new here, if you j are just tuning in, make sure to request a free audiobook in the chat if you want one. I'm giving away five of them today to five different people uh, from either the Other Life series, the Selfless Hero series um, by William D. Arend, or any of my other lit RPGs, the Feedback Loop, Paragon, Sigil Online, or Delver's LLC. So, give us a shout out in the chat if you want a free audiobook, and I'll get to you after the show. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and get through these stats. Don't need that. Well, I'll go ahead and do it. So, okay, so he's, he uses his power to look at her stats. Name. Lillian Lux. Power. Ethereal Projections. Alias. Mab. Soul Stealer. Demon. Secondary Power. Mana Manipulation. Physical Status. Healthy. Mental Status. Confused. Positive statuses, none. Negative statuses, fear. A quick glance and he confirmed everything was, was as he'd expected. Did you know you technically have a second power? Mana manipulation? Not sure if that's intrinsic or learned. He flipped it over to the second sheet. Strength, 70, 37. Upgrade, 370. Dexterity, 55. Upgrade, 550. Agility, 53. Upgrade, 530. Oh, wow. Stamina, 42. Upgrade, 420. Wisdom, 67. That was a weird way to say wisdom. Wisdom, 67. Upgrade, 670. Intelligence, 88. Upgrade, 880. Luck, 21. Upgrade, 210. Primary power, 64. Upgrade, 6400. Secondary power, 59. Upgrade, 5900. Hmm. All right. I have a pretty good idea about you, Lily, from a power and abilities perspective. That's all without the context of who you are, though, Felix said, rapidly filling in the information into the spreadsheet. I'd appreciate it if you could tell me about you. Lily squirmed in her seat, wringing her hands slowly. The strong, violent mage was gone. All that was left was a woman who seemed more scared than anything. You can really see all that? She asked, looking at the spreadsheet from the other side. Sure can. It's my power. Up until recently, it wasn't very useful, Felix said, a touch self-consciously. It is what it is, though. Lily pursed her lips, then spread her hands out in front of him. I was never anything special. Went to sc Oh, no, this is Lily. I was never anything special. Went to school. Graduated. Went on to get a legal degree, Lily said, tracing the wood grain in the desk with a fingernail. Then I had a case. Involved black magic. The kind they warn you not to get involved in. Lily shrugged her shoulders. I represented him. I believed in him. Believed he was innocent. I was wrong. I don't want to go into the details, but he tried to kill me, and I knocked him out instead. He wasn't dead, but I didn't think he'd live longer either. He'd locked us in his library when he tried to kill me. Lily sighed, turning her head to the side. <sighs> there wasn't much to do. I couldn't break the door down. It was reinforced by magic, I think. So I started reading from the book he had, he had laying out. It was full of diagrams, instructions, warnings, spells. Suddenly I pulled his soul out. I felt incredible. I felt powerful. After a while, the magic on the door faded and I was able to escape. I called the police and they came over. It was ruled self-defense. Felix nodded, fascinated. Then later I had another case. I knew she was guilty. She told me so. So? I killed her and took her soul. Then another. And another. Eventually it caught up with me, of course. You can't make your clients disappear every time they appear guilty without someone noticing. Lily let out a small breath, a slow breath, 
and leaned back into her seat. That's when the goody-goodies got involved. Killed a few of those, and suddenly I'm on a titanic level of power. Super souls are worth a lot more. A whole lot more. I end up doing my own thing for years. I haven't aged a year in a decade. And since your own power said I'm 26, it sounds like I really have stopped aging. And here I am. Felix held up a finger. You were a lawyer? Yep. Was a trial lawyer. Defense. Did pretty well with minor crimes, she said, a small smile sneaking across her face, only to disappear as quickly as it came. Great. Here, Felix said, reaching down into a drawer. He'd stuck his contract there after coming home. Fishing it out, he laid it out on the desk in front of him. I'd like you to read over this and tell me your thoughts. The problem is the board is trying to get me to pay rent that they claim I should be paying for living here. Once you're all caught up on that, we can discuss it and see what we can do. I'm sure I'm missing something. I leave it to you. Lily looked at the packet of paper, then back to him. You would have me... Be your lawyer? She asked in a small voice. Well, legal counsel, at the very least. I'm not sure if you were disbarred or not. I'm not sure if you were disbarred or not. It would be nice if you weren't, though. Maybe we could get you back on track for that? Look into it and see what it'd take. Lily seemed awestruck at that. She picked up the packet and then looked to him. She gave him a tiny nod of her head. I'll do that. All right, that's it for now. Could you send in the next person? Felix said with a smile for her. Yeah, I can do that. Do... Do you want me to have Andrea bring in pancakes when they're ready? I'll eat last. This is a bit more important for the moment. Thanks, Lily. Thanks, Lily. Felix said, closing the drawer and then folding his hands on the desk. Lily walked to the door, opened it, and stepped out of the study quickly. Pancakes! Came, a sh came back a shouted duo of voices as Lily exited. Catch! There was a splat-like noise, followed by a growl and a screech. Felicia stomped into his study, the short woman slamming the door shut with the back of her fist. So, you've stolen my wits, have you? Growled the short woman. Made me as inept as an elf with a weight set? She stomped up to his desk and slapped her hands onto the surface, glaring at him over the top of it. I'm not as daft as that magical tart that just left. What do I have to get... What do I have to do to get my wits back? She spat at him. Do I need to start taking my clothes off here now? Despite all your pretty words? You wouldn't take advantage because we'd be offering? Wait. Stop talking. Felix, interrupt Felix interrupted her, holding up a hand. Then he gestured to the chair. Please, take a seat if you would. I propose a simple solution to what clearly is going to be a po problematic conversation for us both. You ask a question, I'll answer, then we go back and forth till you're satisfied. Felicia glared at him, her jaw working soundlessly. After a minute of what truly looked like she was shouting at him wordlessly, she held up her, her arms and looked as if she would split down the middle. Please, calm down, and let's talk. Once you've seated yourself, I'll remove the compulsion. The sound of her panting dominated the room. Slowly, she eased herself in the chair, staring murderously at him with a red face. You can speak. Now please, back to the beginning. What do you have to do to get your wits back was your first question. Now, see, that's the problem. If I gave you your wits back, I lose out on all the points that your power offers. And you give me 1,550. That's a lot. Felicia's face scrunched into a scowl. She opened her mouth, then closed it, pressing her hands to her stomach. I see. I see. Or at least, I think I do. I offer a trade. Barter, if you will. Felix tilted his head to one side. He was curious. What could she offer him that he couldn't take by force? You, s you say you can't give me my wits back because it takes your points. What if I use my wits to get you more points? Felix put his elbow on the desk and then his chin into his hand. I'm listening. 
She gave him a bright smile and leaned forward. I'm a genius at inventing things. I can build things that would hone, empower, and build up these girls' powers. Perhaps even a machine that could enhance them permanently. But I'd need my wits to do it. I'd need... It'd need to be permanent for it to affect my pool, Felix said. Sighing, he sat up. Sighing, he sat upright again. <sighs> Give me a bit with your points. I need them for a time. Then we can see about giving you your wits back. There's a lot of work to be done right now in the short term. Unless you want to give me a specific order for every little thing, you'll be giving me part of my wits back, she said. I can't. But I'll make you a deal. What can I do for you now that you'd accept as an act of goodwill? Sometimes you want for yourself that would... Something you want for yourself that would show you that giving me some time is truly in all of our interests. She eyed him her argument frozen on her tongue. How much can you change? One of them ninnies said you can change us. Quite a bit. What'd you have in mind? Can you make me taller? Felix stepped, stopped himself from instantly replying. Kit had opened his mind to new possibilities. Instead, he focused on Felicia and what he believed would be more in line with her character sheet for things relating to her physical appearance. Much as it had happened before, a new window f surfaced, one that had all of Felicia's measurements in it. Her height was listed at a paltry four foot eleven, and it would only cost him a hundred points to bump her up an inch. I sure can. What kind of height did you ha what kind of height did you have in mind? Ah, uh, oh. Uh, Felicia mumbled, scratching her shoulder. Maybe five foot four. That's still short, but not child short, I guess. Felix looked back to the screen and tapped it five times. It had cost him six hundred points in total. The height was still below average, so it didn't seem to cost that much. Done. Anything else? he asked, looking up at Felicia. She whispered something that he didn't quite catch. Sorry, I missed that. One more time? I want to be a D-cup, Felicia said angrily, meeting his eyes. Felix blinked, unsure of how to respond. Then he shrugged. It didn't matter to him what breast size she was. It didn't matter to him what breast size she was. A glance at the window told him she was an AA cup. Below average again. How much will it cost? Felix flicked the button four times, and the cost went up to 1,400 points even. It was less than what she was worth for one day. It was less than what she was worth for one day. It had only taken him a day to replenish his point values. If he had to do this for everyone, it'd be annoying, but not the end of the world. He'd call everything a bargain and spend today lounging around. Maybe convert something small to silver. Done. Anything else? Felix asked again. Felicia looked to her chest, then back to him. I don't... Once I confirm the changes, they'll happen. You may want to unhook your bra. Going from AA to D... Yeah, it's going to be significant. Felicia turned a deep scarlet red and then reached behind her back and into her shirt. There was a soft click, and her clothes shifted. I'm ready. He hit the button and leaned back to watch. Felicia stood up and rapidly in surprise. Her body began expanding rapidly in multiple ways. Ten seconds later, and it was all over. Her clothes had split at the hip and shoulders, and her increased bosom pulled the fabric tight in the front of her shirt. Glad we had this talk, Felicia. Now, could you send in the next person? Felix said with a smile at the half-breed dwarven woman, who now looked much more like a human than her heritage would have normally allowed. <laughs> All right. So that was chapter seven. And I think we're running out of time here. But I do want to... I do want to investigate Andrea a little bit more. I wonder how many characters he, he picks up throughout this book. <clears throat> We're just going to go a little bit more into chapter 8, and then we'll, we'll call it a day. Because it looks like Andrea's right here at the beginning. Chapter 8. Boldly. <clears throat> the two Andreas were looking at him, unspeaking. He'd already gone through everyone else, 
each person having minor requests here or there. By the end, he'd spent 5,000 of his points. Want me to go make more pancakes? Andrea one said. Let us make you more, Andrea Prime said. No, no, I've had my share. Remember? Felix asked. He was concerned. She had already said that twice. Yes, they said in unison. But pancakes make people happy, Prime said. <clears throat> Throat's a little bit tired. And you seem sad, one said. Felix shook his head and pointed at Andrea Prime. How long can your clone remain with you? How many can you have at one time? She can remain forever. There's no time limit or anything. It can get annoying to sleep in the same bed. We often combine back together at night. As to how many? I'm not sure. We can't count how many in... <clears throat> we can't count how many are inside of us. I think we had 200 out at one time. That was a hard day, Prime said. One nodded her head at that, crossing her arms in front of her. I see. So rather than clones, it's more like multiple versions of you existing at the same time? Felix asked slowly. Andrea Prime blinked and then looked at him with a smile. Want more pancakes? Uh, no. Felix pressed the fingers of his right hand to his temple. Andrea, do you want anything? He began to call up her window for her stats and powers. Name, Andrea Elix. Power, multiple self-projections. Alias, Andrea, Andy, Lex, Myriad. Secondary power, partitioned mind. Physical status, healthy. Mental status, happy. Positive statuses, none. Negative statuses, none. Strength, 44. Dexterity, 62. Agility, 71. Stamina, 51. Wisdom, 81. Intelligence, 17. Luck, 53. Primary power, 31. Secondary power, 79. I'd like to get married w I'd like to get married one day, Prime said with a smile. Have children, one added. Oh yes, children. Dating is hard though. We keep getting tricked by bad men, said Prime. One looked at Prime and patted her on the head gently. Felix was quickly losing himself in the meandering nature of Andrea. That and it was depressing. He'd briefly considered changing some stats as he went through the meetings, but he ended up leaving everyone with their starting numbers. He'd almost increased Lily's luck, since it was so awful, but had decided against it. Here, though, talking to Andrea, he wasn't considering it. He was already running out the numbers in his head. For 2,150 points, he could push her intelligence up to 26. It didn't seem like much, but maybe it had put her on par with a teenager. Quickly making the adjustments and tuning out the conversation she was having with herself about dating, he hoped there would be immediate improvements. Prime and One both immediately stopped talking, their heads whipping around to view him. You changed us. I did. Is that a problem? Felix asked carefully. They looked at each other, as if they were speaking without speaking, then looked back to him. No. Why spend points on us? We're not like the others. We're not really good for anything. You covet your points. Felix couldn't answer that. They are cat ladies. <laughs> they are cat ladies. Felix couldn't answer that. Yes, talking to her was annoying, but he could just as easily have sent her out of the room. I don't know. They say ignorance is bliss, but... I don't know. Never mind that. Is there anything else you want to know? You want now? He asked, diverting the question. Mostly because he couldn't answer it. He didn't like the thoughts he was having. Andrea was too close to his own social ineptitude from his teenager years. No, but... Thank you. I'm happy being me. But maybe later you can let me bring out more of me? They get crowded in there after a while, and it's easier the more I can bring out. Um, yeah. Sure. We could work something out. Though I think I'll be... Though I think it'll be a bit... Felix, <clears throat> Felix said cautiously. Okay. Do you modify yourself at all? I don't think I could resist the temptation if I could. 
Prime said. I can't. I've tried many times, but I can't. I don't know why. Oh, what about the house? You should modify it. I don't own it. Buy one, then. Then upgrade it. We need more bedrooms, Prime explained. One nodded along next to her. Felix started to argue with her, then realized she was right. Beyond right, even. It was so obvious it hurt. He wasn't thinking big enough. A pawn shop is good, but a house? A house I could build into a massive mega house with custom defenses and... You're brilliant, Andrea! Felix claimed, smiling at her. First time I've heard that, Prime said. Me, me too, one agreed. <laughs> All right, so that's, that's going to be it. Um, she's going to be a lot of fun to do, to voice. She's going to be a lot of fun to voice. Um, thanks, everybody, for hanging out with me. Um, this Sunday is another Sound Booth Theater Live, requests only. Um, I'm going to pick another, I, I'm going to pick, uh, another classic myself this time. I think I'm going to, I think I'm going to alternate every Sunday now with the classics. Like, like one Sunday I'm going to pick something of my own and then the next Sunday I'm going to pick a request. So I'll, I'll keep an eye on that classics board in Sound Booth Theater Live and keep in mind what people have been requesting. <clears throat> Um, but also there's going to be, let's see, there's the Cringe Theater. Oh, Sin saying I, I had a request in, in there at some point. Uh, oh, uh, Michael Ryan Soilo requested something <laughs> not for Cringe Theater this time. He really likes to request Cringe Theater stuff, but, uh, he, 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 he showed me something this morning that he said he was going to request, so that might be it. Uh, it's, uh, it's like a... It's a urban fantasy. That seems really cool. It seems like it's right down my my alley. So, uh, so I think I'm gonna pick that one up, and then again one of the classics, and then for cringe theater, um, Andrea Parsnew requested something a while back that I think I'm gonna I'm gonna get to instead, actually. Um, so, uh, yeah, tune in Sunday. And it looks like no one wanted free audiobooks today. Maybe there just wasn't enough of a turnout. Kind of a stressful day on Facebook today, so... At least in the lit RPG community, so I can understand that. But, um... Anyway, for those of, the, for those of you who did attend, thank you again for, for coming. Uh, Super Sales on Superheroes will start production next week. I'm really excited to get started on it. This is... these All these scenes have been really fun. Um, and, um... Yeah, I guess that's it. So I will see you guys Sunday. Where's my cursor? There it is. <laughs>